So when you start QGIS, you should see something like this. We have the main window for the map, a menu bar of a whole range of buttons, and on the left hand side we see the file browser, uh, which is somewhat, somewhat similar to Arc Catalog and ArcGIS, and the layers window very similar to ArcGIS as well. So let's start by browsing to where we unpacked our satellite image. So I stored mine here uh, in this folder. And as you see, the unpacked folder should contain a whole list of TIFF files. Um, the text files are already created when I, when I previously opened these files. But you see all these different uh, TIFF files. And all the files have, uh, have the same name except for the... Uh, last bit at the end, so B1 stands for band 1, and band 1 contains uh, uh, sensitive to the part of the uh, spectrum which uh, is, is useful for distinguishing between different features in shallow water and for aerosols in the atmosphere. And then we see band 2 is for blue, band 3 is for green, band 4 is for red. And five, we get into near infrared. Six, short wavelength infrared. Seven, also short wavelength infrared. Band eight is a panchromatic band, so it's got a higher spatial resolution of only 15 meters compared to the 30 meters for the other files. And 10 and 11 are contain thermal infrared data in an even lower resolution of 100 meters. So if we open some of these files, let's start by opening. And the blue bands. So you will know, just see something like this. We see the file, and um, if we zoom in a bit, a bit on this, you can sort of see. You can see you can clearly see sort of coastline here with the sea here, the Mediterranean Sea, and the land here. And um, this is Valencia, and this is the town of Gandia. I can't see that much because we're only looking at one band. So you can open all the other bands. So you can band, uh, open band three and band four. Um, Band 5, so the near infrared, band 6, band 7. And they're all, all, they all show this very similar pattern with the sea and the land. As a, typically, the land being lighter than the sea. Um, but there are small differences between them. And to get a more intuitive view of this, uh, we want to create a, a, a composite image where the red uh, band, so band 3, will correspond to the red color channel of the image. The green band will correspond to the green band of the image, uh, of the satellite image. Uh, so, and, and the blue band will correspond to the blue band in the image. And the quickest way to do that in QGIS is to go to raster and then do miscellaneous build virtual raster. We select our uh, layers, you need to so make this a little bit bigger. And then we see, so we went band 2, which is blue, band 3, which is green, and band 4, which is red. So add those to our virtual roster. And all the other options should be fine. Close run. And now we've created our file. Let's zoom out a little. And we now see that the C is red and the land is sort of brownish to white. So something doesn't feel quite right. So you can right click on our layer, very similar to ArcGIS, and go to properties. And then we can go to the symbology tab. And you see it's displayed as a multi band. And the red band if it chooses um, the first band of the image, and the green band to the second, and the blue bands the third one so let's swap these things around so we just swap these back we set the red band to band three and the blue band to band one and we click ok and now we see that at least the c is red and the land is green to uh, white and um, i know i some reddish brownish bits so that's already looking a lot a lot better and uh, than it did previously and uh, let's zoom in a little it's still, it's still a very, uh, not a very contrasty image. Um, it's, it's hard to see. There's lots of the details lost here, and this, this is all, all white. So we don't see much detail in there. It looks all fairly poor. Let's make this a bit smaller. Let's take it away for now. 
Um, so we can adjust this uh, with the stretching. So we go just go back to the symbology, and there are a number of options. We can see that it now stretches these values from the value from zero to 1500, uh, for 15,387, etc. And we can change the stretching settings, and we can change how it sets the minimum and the maximum. And the first thing to notice is that it uses the whole raster, and most of this is C, so it tries to optimize the image for the C. So if we switch it to, to the current canvas, it will probably get a better view. So let's see, uh, slightly better, but not quite there. Um, we can try this mean in the standard deviation. What does this look like? Oh, that's already starting to look a bit better. It's still a bit, bit faint and a bit pale. Um, you can also go to histogram. There's an histogram option here. Sometimes there's a button here saying compute histogram, but in this case it's been calculated already. And in this histogram we see uh, we see our three different bands, our blue band and here, and our green band there, and our red band. And we can see the values for the range of data for which they have values. Uh, so there's clearly something in the red here. There's a peak here, and this is probably to do with the C. Is it such a large big peak or perhaps the no data value um, but this looks like like this area where the interesting data is and we can manually change the stretch with these two hand buttons so at the top hand uh, we're now setting to band one which is the blue one so the minimum value for band one and the maximum value for band one let's pick somewhere let's go it seems there seems to be data all the way up here and we choose the other bands at the minimum for green, it's about there, and the maximum for green is about there, and red, and the minimum for red is about here, and the maximum for red is about there. If we click apply, what do we get? We get a much more contrasty image, and it's a bit too cont contrasty, but it's still quite a, quite a bit nicer. You can see quite a bit of data in here. We can recognize mountain ranges here, forested mountain ranges. And we can see the city here, you can see the pier, dam, and you can recognize roads and things. So we can tweak this, uh, this, these settings a bit more, but it will uh, to, to really get the most out of the image.